Well, hi everyone. I'm really excited to be here. Thanks for, for having me. Um, I work with the Open Observatory of Network Interference, commonly known as UNI. And we were born out of a tour project uh, back in 2012. Since 2012, we have been developing free and open source software to enable you to independently investigate internet censorship all around the world. And since 2012, we have been openly publishing uh, measurements collected by Uniprobe users in order to increase transparency of internet censorship and enable you to have access to data that can potentially serve as evidence of censorship. When Uni started off back in 2012, our, our app, uh, our tool, Uniprobe, uh, was in the beginning a command line tool. But over the years, we released a mobile app, which today is run by hundreds of thousands of users in literally almost every country around the world. And this year, we have been very excited because we had the opportunity to launch a new desktop app for Windows and Mac OS. Through the new Uniprobe desktop app, you can measure the blocking of websites, you can measure the blocking of popular instant messaging apps like WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, and Telegram. You can measure the speed and performance of your network, and you can run a number of other uh, different types of tests to measure different forms of network interference. We're also very excited to have new tests which are designed to check the reachability of popular circumvention tools. And this includes Tor, um, this year, we released a new Uniprobe Tor test, which measures the reachability of Tor directory authorities and Tor bridges, and more specifically, OBS4. And so as soon as you run the Uniprobe Tor test, you will immediately have access to the results inside your Uniprobe app. But your test results, your measurements, will also automatically be sent to our servers, processed, and openly published. And that way, by checking the measurements, you can learn where Tor works around the world and whether and how it is blocked in some places. The Uniprobe apps are powered by a measurement engine. And up until recently, our measurement engine was written in C++. This year, we deprecated our C++ measurement engine and rewrote it in Go. And this is really exciting because it makes uh, the writing of new network measurement tests so much easier and so much faster and apart from the new Tor and Siphon tests, we've also written a number of other new tests that we're excited about because we'll be shipping them as part of our apps over the next year. The types of tests that we decided to prioritize on uh, was informed based on emergent censorship events that we came across around the world. Over the last years, we've frequently been seeing uh, SNI-based blocking in many countries, and that is why we decided to prioritize the development of a new SNI blocking experiment. Uh, similarly, other tests like DNS over TLS, uh, we developed a, an experiment for that because we saw it blocked in places like Iran. But apart from the tests that have been developed by the UNI team, um, the fact that our measurement engine is in Go means that it also makes it so much easier for community members to contribute their own tests as well. And so over the last year, we've had many exciting uh, contributions such as a new test for measuring uh, Rise Up VPN blocking. And we definitely encourage you as well to contribute any other tests that you would potentially like to see in the Uniprobe app uh, and have users around the world uh, run. Now, I think um, a very important landmark um, in the universe is that thanks to the great work of my colleague Federico, who literally rewrote our data processing pipeline, we are now in a position to analyze and publish UNI measurements collected from all around the world in literally real time. This means that as soon as you run an Uniprobe test anywhere around the world, you can expect your test results to be openly published um, within a matter of seconds or up to minutes. And the reason why we think this is very important and very exciting is because it literally enables the public, it enables you to independently monitor and investigate censorship events all around the world in real time. You can access UNI data uh, through the UNI API, or we also have it hosted on S3, where you can download the raw data and perform your own analysis. But you can also refer to UNI Explorer, which provides a web platform and which has a powerful search tool through which you can filter through the measurements and access uh, different types of charts. Based on UNI data, we have published a number of different research reports over the last year. Um, and some of these are provided here in the slide. Unfortunately, what we've continued to see this year is that a lot of censorship events tend to be politically motivated. 
For example, in countries like Tanzania, Burundi, and Togo, uh, we observed the blocking of social media during their 2020 elections. In countries like Belarus, we observed widespread internet censorship and even internet outages during protests. In countries like Iran, um, the Farsi edition of Wikipedia was temporarily blocked, and we also started to observe more and more SNI-based blocking and the blocking of DNS over TLS, as mentioned previously. But Iran is far from the only country where you can see SNI-based blocking. Amongst the various countries which adopt this technique, we also see Spain, which more recently started blocking a reproduction rights website through the use of SNI-based blocking. In other countries, such as Myanmar, what we saw was that a number of news websites which belong to ethnic minorities were recently blocked um, because they were considered to be fake news and this was part of a government effort to tackle COVID-19 related disinformation. If you're curious to learn more about our research reports, please refer to the reports section of our website where you can view the, where you can access the relevant UNI data and learn more details. I think one very exciting highlight uh, from our community-related work was the Internet Measurement Village. Um, this was a month-long event that we organized and hosted, which uh, consisted of 18 presentations um, hosted almost every day on many different internet measurement projects, circumvention tool projects such as Tor, as well as uh, different efforts, different advocacy efforts against internet shutdowns. I definitely um, recommend that you check these out and you can view these presentations through the UNI channel on YouTube. We're very excited about 2021 as we have a lot of new projects coming up, um, some of which are listed here. One thing we're very excited about is uh, improving upon the UNIPROBE TOR test to also bootstrap TOR and measure MEEK. Um, and another thing that we're very excited about is our new smart URL list system, which we've been working on over the last year. Through this smart URL system, our goal is to improve website testing and to make the testing of websites more responsive to emergent censorship events. And then through this, we aim to sort of revamp UNI Explorer in order to provide more website-centric stats in order to provide more insight. We also plan to make UniProbe available for Linux, and we also plan to uh, release a new version of UniRun, which will make community-based coordination of censorship measurements much easier and faster and efficient. One of the things that we'll be experimenting with as well in 2021 is creating a browser-based censorship measurement tool to, again, uh, enable rapid response to censorship events. These are some of the, the highlights from the universe. If any of this um, excites you, please do get in touch. Um, there is our contact uh, email address here. Uh, thank you very much. Please do get involved. And um, it is my pleasure to introduce Nathan from The Guardian Project.